right. Okay, Deuteronomy uh, 12, verse 28. We're going to read through this real quick. This is going to be a setup for what we're going to go into. Isn't that 13? You said 1248. Yeah, we're going to start off with Deuteronomy 12, 28. Okay, I thought it said Okay. Deuteronomy 12. Now, this is very important because this is one of the key key things that caused Israel to be chastised. And we're, we're going to see it's going to pop back up in the uh, end time prophecy. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that I may go well with thee, so it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee forever, when thou dost that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and thou inquire not after their gods, small case G gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Now, this is anything we're going to get from here. God is telling the children of Israel, When I conquer all these nations, okay, and I'm going to conquer these nations, He conquered all these nations. Don't be asking the people that are now under you, how'd you serve your gods? Don't even ask them. Don't even have a conversation about Baal and Balaam and all these other gods because it's going to lead them away from God. Now, this is one of the reasons why this is so important. Now, this is all part of the lesson. We can turn to Revelation 13 now, but i got to set this chapter up. Right now, today, we have a movement called Interfaith Denominational Ministries and Interfaith Denominational Degrees, where basically you're not really a Christian, but you're kind of like involved in all the religions. So you have Interfaith Denominational Churches where everybody's coming together. Okay? One organization that has 150,000 members in it. Okay, and now my question is, if you're a Christian pastor, why do you need to be getting involved with an interfaith denominational anything when God says, don't be inquiring about these other gods? And that's the point I'm making. Don't even ask these people how you serve your God. He doesn't even want you to know what they're doing. He wants you to separate themselves from them all together. So a person says, well, I'm a Hindu, and I'm an Islamic guy, and, and I'm a Buddhist, and I'm, I'm worshiping the trees, and I'm a spirit worshiper. Well, you keep that mess all down there, because we don't need no conversation. We shouldn't be talking to try to find a common denominator. There is no common denominator. There's only one true God. See, the difference between Christianity and everybody else, we worship the three-in-one God, the Trinity, triune God, the one and three or three in one. God the Father, the monotheistic one God, Jesus' the Son, His only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. They don't have that. Nobody else on this planet has anything that remotely resembles what we have, you know. So, you know, man can make this up. You look at everything else, it's either guy you can save yourself, but Christianity says you need a savior. Everybody else says you can't really know God. We say you can know God. However, God is unknowable, but he reveals himself to us through scripture, okay. That's why I said you'll find me in the volume of the book. So you waste your time reading this other junk. You need to be reading the Bible. What verse of Deuteronomy did you quote from the mission? It was 12. Deuteronomy 12, uh, 28 through 30. Deuteronomy 12. And that's basically, I mean, if you read the whole chapter, it gets in more depth. But that verse was just, I went there to, to, to establish the fact that God does not want us being friends with the guy down the street and discussing theological options and go, hey, we believe that too. Next thing you know, that's your buddy and you didn't merge something and you didn't create some hybrid religion. Which is happening right now, they're creating a hybrid religion. That's what it is. It's something other than Jesus. Where everybody's sitting down together at the table holding hands and singing together, talking about we all worship the same God. No, we don't worship the same God. You know? The Christian God is not the same God as the Islam God. Okay? The Christian God is not the same God as the Hindu God, because they, they worship multiple gods. Hinduism, Buddhism, Eastern thought, multiple gods. The spiritualists, I don't know what they're doing. I have no idea what those people are doing. They got me lost for words. Okay. We're going to go in the book of Revelation. I'm going to 